Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, today we will take a look at one of the objects that is part of our current exhibition in the gardens of Persia. It is a carpet handmade a hundred years ago in a city named Sarab in the north of Iran, close to the border with Azerbaijan. There are many different figures represented and all together they compose uh, an earthly garden. We find animals, trees, shrubs and flowers. Their shapes, whose fundamental colors are red, green, orange and blue, are flattened against the background. The individual colors are separated one from the other by a sharp contour line. It is a colorful drawing, a distinctly two-dimensional representation. In a Persian garden, flowers and birds abound. Color, fragrances and sounds intoxicate the senses and the shade of enormous trees provides refuge from the blazing Persian sun. The cypress is a symbol of the divine and being an evergreen is a symbol of eternity and other trees which never lose uh, their leaves are also depicted here. Of course, there are also many flowers, roses, jasmines, lilies, narcissus. The garden in Persia is always behind a wall. On the outside is the desert, desiccation and death. Within the wall are flowers, fruit, shade, water and life. Carpets of this size are done by several people, often women. Usually the master sits on the right side, while the apprentice sits on the left. They start at the extremities and meet in the center. The final image is a mirror symmetry. It is a collaborative work. The master sings the colors red, 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 pink, pink pink and so on. The apprentice executes what she hears. They both work in close contact with the carpet and do not have an overall view of what they are doing. So usually a third person sits in the back of the room and looks at the entire composition making sure that the design is forming correctly. In any case, uh, usually the right side of the carpet done by the master is more precisely executed than the left side. This carpet, or maybe I should say this garden, is 2.5 by 3.6 meters long and we have placed it on a big table as a background and in relation to all the objects that are part of this exhibition. The first element that we placed on the carpet is a flower muslin fabric. This specific pattern is liberty and there is no close relation to Iranian culture. But it does visually recall the shadows used by Iranian women in the 1970s. They all had a flower pattern and women would wrap this garden around their bodies. And these are photographs by American photographer Janine Weedle, who visited Iran in 1976. On the muslin there are several objects. In the center of the carpet we place the work of Mariam Razgalam, an Iranian artist who lives and works in Milan. Her watercolors depict a female body always in relation to a natural element, be it a rock, a tree or water.
this figure, she says, is the memory of an aunt of hers that would always tell stories to the children in the garden of their family house in Isfahan. Isfahan was the capital of Iran between the 1500s and the 1700s. It was here that took place the renaissance of Iranian culture. Beautiful gardens were created. Gardens such as the one depicted in this drawing by Mavash Alemi, the most important scholar of Persian gardens. We see that these gardens are completely man-made. They have, like the carpet, a symmetric design with a water infrastructure that brings the plants to life, with shallow water pools that increase the humidity of the air and make it more comfortable, with evergreen trees to create shade, with fruit trees and aromatic shrubs, and with a pavilion that allows contemplation of the earthly garden. We saw these elements already on the carpet, the water, the pomegranate, the flowers, and we see them again represented in the books placed in its perimeter. Farooqi Sistani, one of the most prominent Persian court poets in the history of Persian literature, wrote Oh, gardener, the smell of spring comes to me from the garden. Give me the key to the garden, for tomorrow I will need it. Tomorrow a thousand others will ask for it. But if you wait a while longer until the dove alights in the plane tree and the nightingale comes to visit with the spring, you will have a hundred thousand uninvited guests a day. The weather is improving and the snow is melting on the mountains. The banners of spring are raised on the slopes. The earth in its happiness seems to be the wide heavens. And the wide heavens are a blooming garden. At night the flowers in the garden are like the gardener's lantern. The lonely partridge has again found its mate, and the world has become like a house full of idols, with spring the idol maker. Music of flute and harp comes to my ear from the garden, and now each lover takes wine in hand and strolls towards the garden with a seductive beauty. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.